in February, uh, we put this in the middle of Times Square. So this is a, a data sculpture. It was commissioned. Times Square puts a, a, a heart sculpture in the middle of the square every, val every month for Valentine's Day. So we were asked by the Urban Design Forum to, to uh, come up with a proposal for this uh, with the idea of diversity in mind. So we brainstormed in our studio and, and uh, we, we knew we wanted to do two things. First, we wanted to do the data. We wanted to bring data into public space, like do that trick, but at a really big scale. The second thing we wanted to do is, is like think about what, what a sculpture might look, look like differently from different perspectives. Um, and then uh, the election happened and our proposal was due the day after, um, I think two days after. And we as a studio, I think were really uh, defeated by the election. Like we, we, it was a really hard day for, uh, for everybody. Um, and uh, one of the reasons for that, I think had been um, the really just, just uh, deeply offensive language around immigration and, and we thought was like really, really clear xenophobia and um, New York being New York, we said, okay, let's do this data visualization about, um, about immigration. So that's what it is. The piece is called We Were Strangers Once Too, which is a quote by, uh, it's a quote from scripture that Barack Obama used in a speech about immigration during his presidency. And, uh, and the way that it works is that um, from one angle, it forms this kind of perfect heart, but from, from the back, uh, it's, it's, it's 33 metal poles that are inscribed with um, the population uh, in New York City from, from uh, 100 plus different countries. I read an interview with a, with a sociologist whose name is escaping me right now, uh, who, who she had spent nine years in the southern United States trying to get the bot to the bottom of this ideological divide, which is just growing and growing and growing in the country. Um, and at the end of it, they asked her, like, well, what can you do? And, and her answer really, really stuck with me, which is that she said, there's, like, there's only one thing to do, and that's to create small bridges. Like, you need to make little, little interventions to try to get people to talk to each other. It's like the only thing we can do. And so we, start, we really think of this project, even though it was in like the, you know, literally the biggest, busiest public space in the world, not the biggest, but the busiest, um, is, a, is a small bridge. It's a place where people from red states and blue states can, can have an, a, a dialogue about something because it's this bright pink sculpture. It's not threatening. It's like a, a time for people to talk around something. You can, you can walk in it. Uh, I, would, I would challenge anybody from America or anywhere else to walk through this sculpture without feeling a connection to one of these countries. Like, I don't really care who you are, like, your ancestors came from one of those countries or the guy you play football with on Saturdays or the, the, you know, the person who, who takes care of your kids. Like, they're all from these places and I think walking through it and that physical feeling of like, of, of touch, in touching these things is, is, is really important.